Do you participate in artist trading card swaps? Are you always looking for a way to make your artist trading cards a little more interesting so that the recipient that you are paired with is excited to receive your card? I know I am. My name is Peg and I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I wanted to create some cards that had a little bit of depth to them. And the theme for my artist trading card swap this month is Moon. So the first thing I'm going to do is run these Flora and Fauna dies through my Sissix Big Shot and create some depth utilizing just plain white cardstock. Now, if you don't have a Sissix and you don't have the dies, all you have to do is hand illustrate, hand draw something on a piece of white cardstock and cut it out. The equipment isn't necessary to get this effect. You can see up in the upper right hand corner where I have cut my cards to the two and a half inches by three and a half inches for the standard artist trading card size. So now I'm just trying to get the, the white cardstock separated away from my dies that I ran through. And as soon as I get that done, we'll move forward. These dies, if you've ever noticed, I know it took me forever to figure this out, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to you if you're a little slow to the take like I was. They have these little, tiny little holes, and if you take your craft pick and punch through those from the backside, it will release that paper that is caught inside. Now, why it took me so long to figure that out, I have no idea, but now I know, and it makes using the dies a lot more pleasurable. So I have those all cut out. I'm going to set those up to the side for just a second, kind of clean off my workspace and then we'll get moving with getting those put into place. I'm using glitter glue because I find that it dries fast and comes out in that it has that nice little metal top that gives you a nice thin stream of glue. And when I'm dealing with these real intricate little cutouts, that of course is preferable. I'll decide where we want to place these and get them glued into place. Now, while I'm gluing these down, I will tell you that there is a face, not a Facebook swap, but a artist trading card swap that goes on over at my Facebook group, Two Old Crows Mixed Media. If you would like to participate in a swap each month, we always kind of announce them um, towards the middle of the month and then get started swapping at the first of the month through the 15th. The announcement for the August swap will be going out very soon. So pop on over, join the group, and sign up to swap. Everybody is assigned one part, or you, you're assigned partners, you communicate with each other, you put two ATC cards in an envelope and mail them off. Cost you about anywhere from, depending on if you're going U.S. or international, anywhere from 75 cents to three dollars to participate so for the postage and of course you have to create the atc card so now i have those glued down and i'm just going to trim around the outside edge to make that a nice flush edge and we'll get the second one done in this particular swap i am sending out two ATC cards to two different recipients. So now that <clears throat> the glue is dry, 
and everything is in place and I have checked it to make sure there's nothing that is coming up, I am coating it with a coat of gesso. The gesso just helps the card accept further acrylic paint better. Um, you can just go straight with acrylic paint. That's fine. It doesn't matter. I, it does accept it either way, but to me, I think this just creates a better substrate. So now that I have allowed that gesso to dry, I am going to start working on my moon. And I have chosen a metallic silver to start. And I don't want to paint, I want to dab. So I am dabbing that acrylic paint up in the corner. I'm going to go with corner moons on these two cards. And I want to dab because I want that texture that dabbing gives that acrylic paint. So it stands up a little bit. This is where that white gesso background comes in nice because that gesso might peek through in, in different areas. And I like that. So I'm going to let that silver dry and come back with a pearl. Both of these are metallics, a silver metallic and a pearl metallic paint. And they are just your basic deco art style craft paints. And we'll dab that silver into place as well. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> dab the pearl into place as well. Okay, now that those are dry, I am cutting with my two inch hole punch. I believe it's a two inch or it might be a one inch. I'm not exactly sure, but you use the size that works for you to create my moon. And I'm laying that and I just cut it out of copy paper. I'm using that as a mask to mask off my moon. I've pulled out some black acrylic paint and I will paint the rest of the card covering up everything but what I've masked with my little punch circle with a black paint. I'm being very careful when I get up next to that paper because I don't want my black to bleed underneath. So I'm kind of dabbing around that to prevent the paper to prevent the paint from running underneath that copy paper. Sorry about getting my head in the uh, image here, but you know, sometimes you just aren't thinking about where that camera is. I did just get all my hair cut off. I went from long hair to short hair in a, in a whim. Now we have that moon peeking out and the texture from the plants that we glued into place. You know, make sure everything is good and dry and then we'll See what we can do to get those plants to stand out just a little bit better. Now, the what I'm trying to do now is add a little more texture to the moon. And this is texture paste that I am dabbing with a very small brush. Of course, it didn't take but a moment for the brush to get all clogged up. So I'm going straight to my fingers 
and I shall just dab some craters and some interest into that silvery pearly moon with the white texture paste. Texture paste I make out of baby powder, four parts baby, baby powder, one part glue I use just plain school glue, white glue, and one part white acrylic paint. I buy the cheap white acrylic paint in the hardware section at the big box stores, Walmart, Target, whatever um, discount store might be near you. And you can buy a you know, small little quart of white acrylic paint and have it on hand for a very long time. So now that I have that done, I would thought I would add just a tiny bit of stars to the equation. So I have put some of my pearl metallic down, spritzed it with a little bit of water, pulled out the fan brush, and am just tapping those stars into place. And now I want to also add just a little bit of shadow underneath that moon, you know, and then I, I say that and the, the Cat Stevens song, Moon Shadow, keeps going through my head. So I've had that in my head ever since I've been working on these moons. Moon shadow, moon shadow. I'm being followed by a moon shadow. And I would sing it for you, but you would probably unsubscribe to my channel. And we can't have that. I just hit 9,000 subscribers. And I've taken just a wet cloth and I'm dabbing that around the outside edge of that moon to make that little bit of shadow. I think I got a little too aggressive there, so I'm going to cut another circle out and just clean that up. Thought I'd leave the mistake in just so you can see that not everything runs perfectly. And my cat is getting close to my mic. It's not me purring. That is Kurt. I know many of you have met Kurt throughout, and he's, he's not my cat. He's my daughter's cat that happens to be living with me for a while. I am babysitting. So now I want to add a little bit of dimension to that floral um, texture that we have in this cord because uh, you can see it, you can't, but I can. <laughs> it doesn't really show up well on film, but you, it's raised, it's visible, but I'm going to add some violet because I think that violet really kind of represents that dusk, that nighttime, that right after sunset, deepness, darkness, and we'll get some violet brushed into this. I'm just dry brushing it in. And then I will come back over it with some gold paste. And I use the Luster Wax by Sizzix, which I have found to be a great product. And we'll get that out as soon as we get that violet into place. And I am just using my finger to spread this luster wax. I just dip my finger down into that wax and rub it across the texture. And the texture picks up the wax and I think it looks pretty doggone good. So now we have the base of these cards done. We have the moon shining brightly in the corner 
over the floral and fauna that has that violet depth with uh, some gold luster wax. I have these two violet based uh, stamps that I'm going to use. I'm going to drop a little bit of cheesecloth behind those. and put those into place. I am choosing to just put some cheesecloth behind these stamps. It is a black bean dyed cheesecloth or a cheesecloth that I dyed with black beans. So it has that purpley blue hue to it. And the stamps are beautiful stamps. They're ones that I received in a happy mail. And I believe these are both stamps from Portugal. So they stand out enough on their own. A little bit of cheesecloth behind them, glue them into place, and we have a completed card. I'm also showing you the two cards that I did last week. The link to those will be at the end screen. Those were my paper doll cards that I made, and here is the texture card with the cutouts or with the Sissic dies or something that you cut out just to create a little texture. I've written on the back what I used and these are off in the mail. Two to Tennessee, two to Italy, and I hope that the recipients find these agreeable or acceptable or I hope they like them is what I'm trying to say. So thank you for coming along with me while I made this second ATC card. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Here's the video for the previous week's card. Bye for now.